tree diagrams with replacement non-conditional. A bag contains five blue and four red balls. A ball is picked at random and its colour noted, then replaced. A second ball is then picked at random and its colour noted. What is the probability of picking at least one red ball? First, draw a tree diagram. Then add the events and the probabilities. On the first pick, you can get blue or red. Blue has the probability of 5 out of 9. Red has the probability of 4 out of 9. On the second pick, you could also get blue or red. Because the ball has been replaced, the probabilities remain the, remain the same. Blue is 5 out of 9. Red is 4 out of 9. Finally, put the outcomes and work out their probabilities. Probability of blue and blue. With the probability of 5 out of 9 times 5 out of 9, which equals 25 out of 81. The probability of blue and red. Which has a probability of 5 out of 9 times 4 out of 9, which equals 20 out of 81. Probability of red and blue. Which has a probability of 4 out of 9 times 5 out of 9, which equals 20 out of 81. Then the probability of red and red which has the probability of 4 out of 9 times 4 out of 9, which equals 16 out of 81. All of the probabilities add up to 1. 81 out of 81, which equals 1. This is because one of those events is definitely going to happen. Now you can answer the question, what is the probability of picking at least one red ball? The probability of blue and red has one red ball. The probability of red and blue has one red ball. The probability of red and red has one red ball. So the probability at least one red ball is 20 out of 81 plus 20 out of 81 plus 16 out of 81, which is 56 out of 81. That is also the same as the probability of one minus the probability of two red balls, which is one minus 25 out of 81, which is also 56 out of 81. Without replacement, conditional. A bag contains five blue balls and four red balls. A ball is picked out at random and its colour noted. The ball is not replaced. A second ball is picked at random and its colour noted. What is the probability of picking at least one red ball? Draw a tree diagram. Write in the events and work out the probability of each event occurring. For the first pick, you could pick a blue ball or a red ball. The probability of blue is 5 out of 9. The probability of red is 4 out of 9. For the second pick, you could also pick blue or red. But because the first ball was not replaced, the probabilities have changed. If the first ball was blue, the probability of blue on the second pick is now 4 out of 8. The probability of red is now 4 out of 8. If the first ball picked was red, 
the probability of blue on the second pick is now 5 out of 8. And the probability of red is now 3 out of 8. Now write down what events have occurred and work out their probabilities. Probability of blue and blue which has a probability of 5 over 9 times 4 over 8, which equals 20 out of 72. The probability of blue and red, which has a probability of 5 over 9 times 4 over 8, which equals 20 out of 72. The probability of red and blue, which has a probability of 4 out of 9 times 5 out of 8, which equals 20 out of 72. And the probability of red and red, which has a probability of 4 out of 9 times 3 out of 8, which is 12 out of 72. Again, the probabilities of 20 out of 72 plus 20 out of 72 plus 20 out of 72 plus 12 out of 72 equals 72 out of 72, which equals 1. Because one of those events is definitely going to happen. The probability of at least one red ball is equal to 1 minus the probability of two red balls which equals 1 minus 12 out of 72, which is equal to 60 out of 72. Understanding a conditional tree diagram. At the end of each branch go the events. Event A. Event not A. Event B. Event not B. On the branches go the probabilities. The probability of A. The probability of not A. The probability of B given A has occurred. The probability of not B given A has occurred. The probability of B, given A, has not occurred. The probability of B not occurring, given that A has not occurred. At the end, go the combined probabilities. So the probability of A and B. The probability of A and not B. The probability of not A and B the probability of not A and not B. OK, let's have a look at this tree diagram question. And what we're going to do here is we're going to show you how to fill in a tree diagram, how to work out some probabilities from a tree diagram, and then most importantly, how to use conditional probability with a tree diagram, which I think is the easiest way to work out conditional probability. So a normal die is rolled, a multiple of three is rolled, bag A is chosen. So we're going to look at this going to say right if we get a multiple of three so we're just going to say that's times three and this one represents not three or not a multiple of three so there are three and six on the dice are multiples of three so there's two out of six or one third now the first thing about tree diagram is the set of branches must make one okay so one third must be two thirds here so if I roll a multiple of three, bag A is chosen, and there are four out of ten red beans and yellow beans, there are six out of ten. So this is bag A. So let's just put a little label on that to make sure that's bag A. And this is bag B, because we choose bag B if we don't get a multiple of three. Uh, in bag B there are two red beans, so it's two out of ten, and eight yellow beans. Now, you don't have to, 
but it is very, very important that you fill in the ends of these tree diagrams. So this is one third and four over 10. So you multiply them together to get four out of 30. Now I could simplify these, but I'm not going to just yet because I want all my denominators to be over 30. So the next one becomes six over 30 and then four over 30. And this one becomes 16 over 30. I could actually make all these over 15, but I'm not going to. It's just so much easier not to do that. Complete the tree diagram below. So that one's done. Find the probability of a red beam. So I'm going to look along here at getting a red beam. Here is red, and here is red, even though I didn't label that on the tree diagram. This is a red beam. This is a yellow beam. So now it's this one or this one. We're going to add those two together to get 8 out of 30. Now at this point, you could simplify if the question requires 14 out of 15. So fairly straightforward. Now this is the bit that really gets confusing for a lot of students. It's this key trigger word here, given that, given that a red has been chosen. So what I like to do here is, as I know that a red beam has been chosen, I want to cross off what I know hasn't happened. This has not happened. This has not happened. So this is the only possibilities open to me and those are going to go on the bottom of my fraction and if you want you can keep that as 8 over 30 and that's on the bottom of my fraction given that a red has been chosen there we are there's given that a red has been chosen find the probability the die was a multiple of three so was it i remember i haven't chosen this i haven't chosen this i've got rid of them they're out of the, out of the equation now multiple of three is this one a multiple of three no is this one a multiple of three? Yes. If you like, put a double tick by it, and that's the one that goes on top. So it's now 4 over 30. We can now cancel off these, and we'll always be able to do that if we've left the denominators the same. So we've got 4 out of 8, or 1 over 2. Very important that you see these given that questions, and... <clears throat> um, you cross off the things on the tree diagrams. It's the easiest way to solve given that questions.